Hi guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be restoring the 16GB iPhone 6S on iOS 10.2. Now I picked this phone up off of eBay for $60 Australian, but it does have some issues like a cracked display, a broken home button, and a battery life of about 10 to 15 seconds. So in this video, we're gonna be fixing all those problems as well as trying to get a free battery replacement from Apple as the phone was eligible for a free replacement battery, but we'll talk a little bit about that later on and why Apple would not replace my battery. So when the iPhone arrived, it just arrived in this plain old white packaging um, with obviously the phone wrapped in bubble wrap. So removing that, we can see the extent of the damage um, on this iPhone success. Now this was actually starting uh, as a bid, but I just sent them an offer and they accepted my offer of $60 first time. So I technically probably would have been able to get it cheaper, but 60 bucks is really good for an iPhone 6S anyway. As you can see, the home button is non-functional, so I was not able to set the device up on iOS 10.2. So it was time to replace the cracked LCD as well as the home button. Now the screw would not come out so I actually had to use a metal pry tool just to get some pressure behind the screw um, and therefore the screw could eventually come out. Now opening up the device I can go ahead and see inside it and you can see just how dirty and how much dirt is actually in this device. Now at first with those marks in the display I thought that this iPhone may have come in contact with some kind of liquid but after inspecting the iPhone and looking at the water indicators they are white and have not come in contact with any kind of liquid which is excellent so this iPhone obviously just maybe had a bit of moisture touch the screen um, from it obviously being cracked very easy for water and liquids and moisture to enter the display once it's cracked. So once I've done that, I can go ahead and disconnect the battery uh, before disconnecting the screen. I don't want to fry anything there. Now we can get a full look inside the iPhone itself. Now I did give the insides of this iPhone a nice clean out and now you can see just how much better it looks. Now it's time to reinstall the new screen with home button so we can go ahead and take this to the Apple Store and try and get my free replacement battery. Now I did transplant the home button into another LCD and test out the device uh, with that original home button. Now while the home button functionality didn't work, Touch ID did. So it was reading my fingerprint but was not clicking um, so it was actually broken in somewhere. Um, it would actually click and press in but it wouldn't be registered on the device. So that has to be replaced so I will lose Touch ID on this device um, sadly but oh well it's better than having no home button. So transferring the old camera, earpiece, camera bracket and display bracket from the old screen, we can go ahead and transfer those over to the new LCD and install a new home button. Now the LCD I chose for this device is a refurbished Apple display, meaning that the LCD is actually a used screen pulled off of an iPhone with a cracked panel and they've gone ahead and replaced the top layer of glass with a new piece. So basically you're getting an original Apple display with a new piece of glass that isn't cracked. This is the way to go if you want the best color and touch as well as 3D touch for your iPhone as you're getting that original panel with a new piece of glass installed. These can be picked up from places like eBay um, and individual websites uh, as such and are usually not much more expensive than aftermarket low quality displays. So now I can go ahead and install the new home button which obviously won't contain the touch ID um, which will be paired with the device itself. So if you do replace a home button, uh, it will not function as Touch ID as it is not paired to the device. This is a security reason, um, I believe, from Apple. Going ahead and testing out the display, everything is working just fine. So now it's time to install the seal, which also helps with dust as well as the 3D touch on the device. Now a lot of third party screen uh, repair shops and things like that don't install this seal, which I think is really ridiculous considering how easy it is to do and doesn't take very much time at all. And the seal itself costs around one to two dollars. Now we can go ahead and seal everything back up and make it look as stock and as factory as possible. I do this just to make it look nicer in case someone ever has to open the device. Uh, it was missing a couple of screws, so I found some that would fit into the device and were um, in my parts collection. So I can go ahead and finish this up, make it look nice and professional, install everything back how it would have looked from the factory. So when Apple opens it, they would not know that the screen has been replaced, uh, just in case they would complain about that. Now checking the battery health, you can see just how bad the battery is on this device. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is run a Geekbench battery life test just to show you guys how long the battery lasts on this iPhone. And we're gonna be doing it in real time. That's how long it lasts. So right here, 
100% charge. We're going to go ahead and unplug it and run the benchmark on the device. And we're just going to go ahead and let this uh, run until the device goes flat. Yep, that's it. It lasts five seconds on battery charge. So 100% to flat in five seconds. So this battery is beyond cooked. It's so bad that it is 100% unusable. Running the test again, uh, this time it actually lasted 20 seconds. So the device itself ranges from about five to 20 seconds on battery. Um, it never seems to get any longer than that. Now the device was eligible for the replacement shutdown program from Apple. So I went ahead and took the device to an Apple store and this is what they had to say about my device. Um, but it's coming up with here saying that just to show you, um, serial number has already been replaced and is no longer eligible for service. Um, so unfortunately we wouldn't be able to um, repair or replace it today. Yeah, so just to show you, if we were to, like, if I was to select it for an install repair, um, all of them are greyed out except for basic troubleshooting. But we can potentially try and escalate it to our um, activations team. Um, yeah. That process can take some time. Yeah. Um, and we do have to take, take the device. Is there anything you could think of what might have caused Look, at that? My, or... When we were talking to the managers, they may mention that um, maybe during this repair, um, the rather than us scanning the serial number, it may have been entered in manually yeah. um, and entered incorrectly. Um, so that could be a potential cause of it. Uh, this has been like a serial number mismatch. So coming back home, I decided that I would do the battery replacement myself as the battery that I used to replace only cost me $12 and it wasn't worth all the mucking around. Now I did ask the Apple employee that if the display was replaced by a third party, would they still do a battery replacement or would it still be covered under the unexpected shutdown program? And he replied with yes, if the display has been changed, Apple will still service your battery or do the battery replacement program. So that even wasn't an issue uh, in the first place. Now I wasn't done yet. I decided to call Apple Care and see what they had to say about the device. And this is what they had to say. Maybe we can't work on it, but we might be able to look at some other options, but maybe uh, getting the battery replaced by a third party, okay? So that advice was coming from a senior advisor at Apple Care. So they recommended to do the battery replacement by a third party, which is exactly what I ended up doing here. And you can see um, I'm going ahead with that repair. And after all that, I just gave in and did it myself. It wasn't worth the mucking around uh, trying to get Apple to do the free replacement. So I just brought a battery, reopened the device um, and took out the old battery. Now when removing the old battery, I recommend taking out the Taptic engine. It will allow you to have a little bit more room to pull out the battery tabs. Now you want to be very careful not to rip one of those because if they break off, then you have to actually apply heat to the back of the phone and pry the battery. You don't want to do that. It's a lot more difficult than just removing the tabs um, and then the battery basically just falls out. After that, you can go ahead and install the new battery. Um, so basically, and go ahead and put the device back together for the second time, reinstalling a new seal for the 3D Touch and a little bit of dust and water resistance. Go ahead and make sure it powers on and everything's working, and I can go ahead and reseal the display back into the device, make sure everything is seated correctly, and then go ahead and screw it all back down. So this is it. The iPhone 6S 16 gig on iOS 10.2 that I picked up off of eBay for $60 and replaced the display, home button, and battery. Now it's a shame that Apple wouldn't replace the battery as it was under the unexpected shutdown replacement program, but in the end it was just easier doing the battery replacement myself. The senior advisor at Apple refused to help me unless I was going to update my device to iOS 11.4.1. And as I did not want to update to iOS 11 and keep the device on iOS 10.2, I decided just to do it myself as it wasn't worth it. Now the battery I installed is actually a higher capacity than what came out of the device. Whether that's just a gimmick or not, I am not sure. But either way, the iPhone 6S has great battery life now after the battery replacement. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the iPhone restoration playlist for more videos like this one. Also, make sure you follow my social media. Link will be in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.